how to create a Kubernetes on Microsoft Azure Cloud or we call managed Kubernetes on Azure, which is Azure Kubernetes service using a step-by-step -step instructions on cloud. I'm going to cover this in this episode. Hi, this is Atul from team k Academy, where we help you on your journey to learn cloud and cloud native, including Kubernetes and Docker. Now, I'll quickly explain here in this that I'll be using a free cloud account and on that cloud account, I'm going to create a Kubernetes cluster. And in subsequent videos, we'll be talking about uh, once this Kubernetes cluster is done in future uh, videos, we'll talk about pod. Pod is nothing but a smallest unit on which your containerized applications run. In future, we'll also cover things like exposing service services through an entry point where client applications or one pod or your end users can talk to the application running on top of pod. And then we'll also cover in subsequent videos in future about how to scale a node and pod. Node is a virtual machine on which your pods run and you can have multiple nodes and you can have multiple pods as well. So all those in future episodes. Now, before I move forward, so if you don't have a free account, you can go and create a free Azure Cloud account by going to URL ktonyacademy.com forward slash Azure02. Also, I'm referencing this guide and if you want to download this guide and more detailed in step-by-step -step instructions will be available at ketonacademy.com forward slash K8S78. Now, if you need any help in performing this lab or hitting any issues, leave them in a comment or you can also discuss this in our private community, which is on ketonacademy.com forward slash K8S community. And what I want you to do is once you've created the cluster, take a screenshot of the cluster and either leave them as a comment or post it in our Kubernetes community. So I know that you're making progress and will also inspire me and others to perform this lab. With that, let's go straight on to the Azure portal and create this Kubernetes cluster that's AKS. So what you need to do, you sign into Azure portal and go and search for something here, Azure Kubernetes service or AKS or Kubernetes service. So this is where you go and create your Kubernetes cluster. So I already have a Kubernetes cluster running, um, which is version 1.21, base Kubernetes, Kubernetes version 1.21 in East US. I'm going to create a separate one. I'll show you how to create a separate one. So this is where your plus sign is. You will say create a Kubernetes cluster. Now Arc Kubernetes cluster with Arc is separate, which will not go right now. Maybe if you have any questions, you can ask or Google it. It'll be easy to explain. So right now here we'll say create Kubernetes cluster and we click on this Kubernetes cluster here. Now, this is where the screens, which I've, as I said earlier, I have another video, which I've explained all these in detail. I'm not going to explain all the things here uh, because we want to do focus and do a quick start for you to create a cluster so that later, and if you want to go and learn deep, you can look at other video, which I mentioned in, you will be able to find it in the same module. This is where subscription. Now you probably might either have a free account or pay as you go account as your pass, or maybe you're using some other subscription. So I'm using here as your pass. Now here a resource group, as I said, probably you already know is a collection of resources that you can manage, control, delete, or apply policies together. So I'm going to create a resource group called Ketonian Academy dash RG one. So I'm saying create a new resource and type the name of the resource that I want to create as a new. Now, rest all, I'm going to give the Kubernetes cluster name. So which is K2 Academy dash KB one Kubernetes cluster name. Now you can select the default region, whatever, most probably if you hit problem in creating this cluster, maybe you have a resource constraint on that particular region. So you might pick US East or US East two and so on. So we'll be picking, I'll sticking to US East availability zones. What is Kubernetes version? I'll have a look at the previous other video for now, leave it to default. We'll leave and we'll here accept the default value, which means we'll use auto scaling and later we'll cover what does auto scaling means. Auto scaling is basically if required, my cluster can scale uh, and additional nodes. So it can auto scale from one by default to five, up to five auto, it can scale up to five. So for now I'm going to keep it one here and rest all. So I'm creating a Kubernetes cluster with just one worker node. It will behind the scene automatically create the master node 
but from worker node we are just creating one worker node again if you don't understand the concept of master and worker maybe be worth looking the kubernetes architecture or azure kubernetes service architecture that has a master and worker node so we're creating a one worker node this is where my application will be deployed node pool there's a default node pool uh, which will run some default pods and for now we are going to deploy our application on this default node pool what is a node pool how do you create them again there's a separate video on aks which we have we have created earlier now one thing uh, is because we wanted to do auto scaling here we said we want to auto scale uh, here here make sure that you enable the virtual machine scale set because if you need or if you're doing auto scaling it will be needing virtual machine scale sets click on then leave all default click on the next part authentication and in authentication we'll say virtual o on the previous section my virtual nodes was disabled and my virtual machine scale set is enabled what is virtual machine scale set again if you're part of our azure administration az104 or azure solution architect az305 we have covered this in detail uh, scale set now for authentication we will be selecting system assigned managed identity now this is a preferred way about defining your authentication mechanism and why do you need it again as i said i've covered all these in detail in one of the previous videos of creating a kubernetes cluster so i don't want to repeat it here again but have a look at that but this is system managed identity is or system assigned managed identity is recommended way we have to enable role based access control which means apart from kubernetes default RBAC it will also use it will be using uh, Kubernetes uh, RBAC method here currently here we are not integrating with uh, Azure Active Directory because I want to keep it simple uh, here we we'll leave encryption type uh, the uh, the operating system disk encryption to the default uh, encryption click on next networking and in the networking part we will be selecting the Azure CNI which I'll explain you in a minute so there are two networking methods you have kubenet which is a default uh, method as your cni is a recommended method if you want to define your own network which is like subnets and vnets and etc what is subnet what is vnet this is the way to assign ip addresses in a network again as your administration az104 as your solution architect az305 we explain these in detail so i'll hold it for now assume that you need some ips and these ips will be received or get it from this virtual network using Azure CNI or container native uh, implementation or networking implementation. We are not defining any uh, load balancer. We are skipping it standard. We are not enabling any HTTP application routing. Security will leave it default here. Network policy is basically will be dictating firewall between your pods. So using network policy policy allow you to uh, apply the uh, firewall between the pods. So we'll leave it to the net as well. Uh, then we click on integration now container registry is where you have all your images so we are not integrating right now for container registry later when we do the ci cd we probably might integrate with container registry could be docker hub or azure container registry acr monitoring we are enabling monitoring which will be monitored using azure monitor here and that monitoring log will go into log analytics and this is another letter exercise which we are doing now next is tags we are if you see here as your policy we leave it to disabled right now as your policy will be dictating what you can or can't do on that uh, that clusters policies will dictate restrictions on your cluster or a, as your resources then tags is key value pair to define for example it's a dev environment test environment which business unit etc and finally we'll say review and create so we'll click on review and create it will see if all the parameters are correct then it'll review and say finally you need to create a button called create so we'll click on once this comes we'll click on create and then i'll move on to the next part we'll be seeing uh, we'll be deploying the application on this or we'll be configuring and then application on the next part so give it one more minute it's creating the cluster or it's validating the cluster and you say click on create and now if you see under here under bell icon here it's saying notify it's initializing the deployment so now it's deploying the cluster now while this cluster is being created which might take 15 20 minutes i would like to invite you for a free two hours class where we'll be talking about containers and kubernetes in depth including certification my ck ckad including 21 step roadmap to go from a complete beginner to doing things like containers kubernetes 
architecture, networking, storage, and a lot more with important things like Ingress controller or security or storage volumes in Kubernetes, including the 30 plus hands-on labs you should be performing. So to register for this free class, go to URL k2academy.com forward slash k8s02 and select the date and time convenient to you. Enter your name, email address and click on yes, save my seat. So with that, let's go back to our Kubernetes cluster, which should be ready by now. Under the deployment here, you can go onto this bell icon notification and say it should show that deployment is succeeded. That means deployment has completed successfully. Now I can go to the resources. You can click on it, say go to the resource. One thing, if in case you forgot to highlight or you miss that, make sure that you delete or terminate this cluster later. Uh, once all the labs uh, in this particular lab is done, all the things are done, make sure you to terminate this cluster. Otherwise you'll be charged or you will eat up your free account or your pass or a money. So it's always important to delete this after, which will show you how to do that later. We'll delete the complete resource group that will delete the cluster. Just wanted to warn you earlier itself. So you can click either here, go to resource, or you can go here and say AKS, go to the Kubernetes. As I said, I already had two cluster. Now, if you notice here, my cluster is not showing here. So I'm a little bit surprised because my subscription is pay as you go and I created it in here its filter is based on pay as you go whereas i created my cluster on other subscription which is my azure pass and that's why now if i see this is the cluster which i created k academy dash kb1 here so i'll go to this cluster and let me move this here now this is all my cluster overview or i can stop my cluster members worker node by going here i can click on connect here to show connect so I have a node pool, which is a single node pool I created, which is nothing but collection of your machines. I have one machine, one node count one. It's already, it's running on Kubernetes version 1.21.7 and state of this Kubernetes cluster is succeeded. So we are good here. Now, next is uh, I need to go and connect to this cluster. So in order to connect, I'll be opening up the cloud shell. And then from here, I'll be setting up these two parameters and then I'll get the credentials of the cluster. And then uh, from here, I'll run and say kubectl, the commands, which is my the output of my commands, uh, which I'll show you uh, here in terms of I'll be connecting to the cluster here. So first, let me go and open the shell. You can either configure a client machine or uh, a Linux machine on which you download the kubectl and Azure CLI, which I already, uh, so that's one option. But other option is you open this cloud shell here which means it's nothing but all the shell which is on your browser itself and there's a two shell you see bash or powershell here let me move it a little bit up here so here if you see it's a bash and powershell we'll be working with bash here and this will give you a command line this is azure cli azure command line with that it also comes with kubernetes command line which is kubectl we call if you see kubectl it comes with that tool which will be using to manage this cluster now, before I can run some kubectl command, my configuration needs to be downloaded from my from this Kubernetes cluster that I have created earlier. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to first set the parameters. We'll say my resource group name is the one which I created earlier, which is k 20 academy rg So I'll copy this and I'll paste it here and say the resource group name is, I'm setting an environment variable which says resource group is this. And then I need one more detail, my cluster name which is k20 academy dash kbs1 so i'll paste it here and hit enter kbs1 so these two parameters are set now i'm saying is i'm getting the credential and credential is nothing but a cube con file kubernetes configuration file which will have all the connection details or connected details to my kubernetes cluster so if you see ls minus a here so currently there's no kubecon uh, committee's configuration file is not here and we'll show you up. So there's a dot cube, which I already had in past. So I think what I should be doing is I already created some configuration file in past. So let me remove that and say move dot cube to dot cube underscore old. So this is the cube folder configuration file. It will come or it will fetch. So I'm saying this command, which is I'm saying to Azure, saying AKS, get my credentials, resource group is my resource group name, which I selected earlier. And my name of the cluster is this cluster name, which I've set the parameters. 
and what it's doing is so uh, it's saying oh so i need to select the subscription as well because i did not select the default subscription so i have to select a subscription as well so let's see the parameters and i'll select the subscription and i'll come back onto this screen so what i did i went into subscription you click on and search subscription and then if you see i have two subscriptions here the subscription as my azure pass this subscription id i need to make it i make a note of this or copy this and then i said a command saying that az account set and then dash dash subscription and the subscription id which is my subscription id in single quotes so that set the subscription id and then i ran this command same command az uh, aks get credentials and the resource group name is my resource group and my aks cluster which i already set earlier and that has created a dot cube folder which i created earlier took a backup because i already had a cluster configuration in past so uh, ls minus a which is a hidden file hold on sorry ls minus a and then inside that there is a dot cube inside that if you look this configuration file cat uh, if you do the config it will tell you the kubernetes cluster location the ssl certificates client id certificate etc and the cluster name etc so once this is done we are ready now now we have the configuration is done i can then go and run my commands cube cuttle or kubernetes cluster command related commands so i'll go to clear this and then say cube cuttle or some people call it cube ctl or cube cuttle so cube cuttle and get nodes it'll give me now the list of nodes which is one only right now here there's only single node cluster we are running in a little bit slow yeah so if you see here that there is only one node agent uh, the status is ready there is a agent pool now if i see kubectl get pods so now if you see the output of kubectl uh, get pods it's saying no resource found in the default namespace now namespace is nothing but a logical contain or a logical partition of your uh, kubernetes cluster where you can divide it and say you can do dev environment test environment prod environment or you can say department wise department one department two or application one and application two and so on now what is pod what is namespace and if you're not familiar with these concepts we have a training program which talks in depth about these kubernetes concepts including what these namespace how do you create them how do you configure services pods ingress controller and a lot more we also cover about certification, CKA, Certified Kubernetes Administrator, and Certified Kubernetes uh, Application Developer. Now, if you want to know more about that, or interested to take your knowledge from here to the next level by becoming a Certified Kubernetes Administrator, or having in-depth knowledge so you can get a job, I would like to invite you for a roughly around two hours free class. So in this roughly free two hours class, I'll be taking you from a complete beginner, covering things like monolithic versus microservices, virtual machines, containers, including Docker, Hub, images, etc., to the Kubernetes architecture, installation, different objects in Kubernetes, how do you install and configure three node Kubernetes cluster, the networking in Kubernetes, including ingress controllers, storage, persistent volumes, the security, things like RBAC, pod, etc., and including certifications. I'll also give you a 30 plus hands-on lab that you should be performing. And if you're preparing for exam, what all sample exam questions as well. Now this two hours class has been taken by hundreds of our students who not only clear their certification, but also get a lot higher paid jobs as well. So to attend this free class, you go to k20anacademy.com forward slash k8s02. I'll put this link in the description as well. Select the date and time convenient to you, enter your name, email address, and click on save my seat. Well, that's pretty much all about creating a Kubernetes cluster or creating an Azure Kubernetes cluster on Azure subscription. Now, what I want you to do is follow the links in the description below and create, if you don't have a free Azure account, go and create a free Azure account. And then using the steps mentioned in this guide or in this video, complete and create the Azure Kubernetes cluster, and then go and connect to this cluster and give me output of the Kubernetes cluster details. Now in subsequent videos, we'll be talking more about how to create these pods or how to integrate with Azure Active Directory or any other topic that you want me to cover in our upcoming YouTube videos. 
So let me know in the comment, what do you want more to see about related to these topics? With that, this is Atul from Team K2N Academy and I'll see you next week with another video.